God will give us new information. New revelation brings new transformation. Amen. New revelation brings new levels of transformation in our conformity to Christ. Hallelujah. Proverbs 29, we'll read together. Verse, verses 17 and 18. Let us read 1, 2, 3. Correct thy son, and he shall give thee rest. Yea, he shall give delight unto thy soul. 18. Where there is no vision, the people perish. But he that keepeth the law, happy is he. Amen. The word of God tells us where there's no vision, the people perish. As we have explicated, Jesus said in Luke 13, verse 3, and verse 5, I tell you, nay, but except you repent, you will all likewise perish. And he says it again, except you repent, you shall all likewise perish. So we say vision is made synonymous to repentance. Say vision, vision. vision. is synonymous, is synonymous with, repentance. with repentance. When the Lord shows us a vision, his vision is for the purpose of us turning. For us turning from us and turning to him. Yes. Turning from sin to Christ. Turning yes. from sickness to Christ the healer. Yes. Turning from the world to the living word. Do you understand today? So the Lord is teaching us Christ's vision for us, his church, that we might turn to him and live just like him and take the world for him in Jesus' name. Can you say amen? amen. Hallelujah. To review, vision is defined in the Hebrew as a mental sight, as a dream, a revelation, or an oracle. So without the Lord's sight, without his vision, Christ, the living word, and the written word, the Bible, they will come perishing in every area of life, temporally and eternally. Can you say amen? amen? We need to know what the Lord is seeing that we might see it and have it. Do you understand? Amen. We cannot even walk in the physical realm without vision. If you see someone without vision physically, they need a stick or a dog or something to guide them. Well, we don't have vision spiritually. We will fall into a ditch, Jesus said. Christ said, can the blind lead the blind? They shall both fall into the ditch. But thank God, Jesus Christ is the light of the world. If we follow him, we will not fall into a ditch, but we will walk into the heights of heaven and lead the world there. Amen? Amen. Praise, the Praise the Lord. So that's what vision is defined as. We've studied so far uh, to review what Christ's vision is for his global church individually concerning individual Christians. Number one, Christ's will and vision is that the gates of hell will not prevail against you. Say Christ's vision. Christ's vision. And that the gates of hell will not prevail against me. Jesus died and rose and shed his blood that not one sin, not one sickness, not depression, not fear, not drugs, not alcohol, not hatred or bitterness, nothing shall prevail against your life in the name of Jesus. Do you understand? Amen. Amen. I have good news. That's what Christ has for you today. Amen. He has victory. Thank victory you. through our Lord Jesus Christ, the Word of God declares. Amen. Next, Christ's vision for his church is that we'll know the Father has given us all things that pertain unto life and godliness. Say, the Father, the Father has, given me has given me all things all that pertain to life pertains. and godliness. That's 2 Peter chapter 1, verse 3. You have, as many of you are trying to seek deliverance, you already have it. Christ has given it to you by the Holy Ghost, and it's in your spirit. It's, it's saying, what I need is already in me. It's in me again. Say, what I need is already in me. From the Father, through our Lord Jesus, by the Holy Ghost. So recap again. Uh, 1 Thessalonians 5, 23, I pray God your whole spirit and soul and body be preserved blameless under the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ. Verse 24, he that calleth you also will do it. So you, have, you are a spirit. Say, I am a spirit. Am a spirit. spirit. You're made in God's image and likeness. In John 4, 24, it says God is a spirit. Amen. That's who you are. You have a soul. Psalm uh, 34, verse 1, it says, I will bless the Lord at all times. He says his will, he'll use his will to bless the Lord. 
Psalm 103, uh, verse 3, bless the Lord, O my soul. David is telling his soul what to do because he's a spirit and his soul is a faculty God has given him under his control to serve the Lord. Do you understand? Amen. David is saying, mind, bless Jesus. Will, bless Jesus. Emotions, bless Jesus. The word of God us, your bodies, the temple of the Holy Ghost. You tell your mind, you tell your will, you tell your emotions, you tell your physical body how to think, how to feel, how to act, how to live, because you are in control through Jesus Christ. Do you understand amen. today? Amen. amen. Say amen. 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 The word of God says your body is the temple of the Holy Ghost. So when the devil tries to get you to fornicate, to masturbate, to drink, to smoke, to fight, to curse, to not read the Bible, not pray, not come to church, you say, body, you're the Holy Ghost temple, Amen. and you obey the Lord Jesus in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Well, the Lord created up Adam, the first man. He said, be fruitful and multiply and have dominion over the earth. Say, I have dominion. I have dominion. You have dominion over your thoughts in Jesus' name. Say, I have dominion over my feelings. Say, I have dominion over my choices. I have dominion over my body. I have dominion over my life. Can I submit it to Jesus Christ? And the Holy Ghost is leading me to follow Jesus. Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. That is Christ's vision for you. That you live entirely and completely as Jesus lived. And you can, as you submit, believe, and obey him, and his grace is sufficient for you to do that. Amen. Amen. Number three, Christ's vision for his church, again from 2 Peter 1 3, is that you realize you already have all things pertaining to life and godliness. By the Holy Ghost, the divine power of God with you and who comes in you when you're filled and baptized with him with the evidence of speaking in unknown tongues. Number three, Christ wants you to know you already have all things pertaining to life and godliness by the Holy Ghost. Isaiah 12, 3 declares, with joy we draw waters out of the wells of salvation. That's referring to your human spirit, the, you in, the real you inside. There's water of salvation. Jesus said in John 7, 37, Out of your belly shall flow rivers of living water. This spake he of the Spirit, which they that believe on him should receive. So the Holy Ghost is God Almighty. He's with you. When you feel that he comes in you, and he has waters of salvation he wants to bring up out of you. Those waters are salvation from sin. From drugs, from alcohol, from bondage. It's deliverance from, from, from hatred, from bitterness. It is deliverance from sickness, from disease, from death. Jesus Christ died and rose that you might have life and have it, and have it more abundantly. It's by the Holy Ghost who's already in your life. He's with you and he comes in you to give you the water, salvation, and victory in every area of your life. Do you understand? Amen. This is the Christian life. Saints, the Christian life is walk in the Spirit, and you shall not fulfill the lust of the flesh. Galatians 5, 16. If we then live in the Spirit, let us walk, also walk in the Spirit. Galatians 5, 25. Do you understand? The life of the Christian is a victorious life. If you've not yet entered into victory, I have good news. You can enter into it today by the Lord Jesus Christ through the power of the Holy Ghost. Do you understand? Amen. amen. Do you understand? Amen. Say amen. amen. Hallelujah. Today we have some new information. Amen. Turn with me, if you would, to Mark 16. Mark chapter 16. We've seen in the preceding weeks, Christ's vision for us as church, as individual limbs in his body. But now we're going to examine and learn what his vision is for his church corporately. As a body as a whole, not just as individuals. Do you understand? And I want to encourage you in this. There's a purpose the Lord has for you in his body, in his church, and on the earth. Until you find that out, your life will be unfulfilled. I remember when I was a young man, unsaved. I grew up here in East Lansing. This is Lansing. I grew up in East Lansing. After I finished high school, I went to Los Angeles, California. I enrolled at the University of Southern California. I studied there. I studied all types of things. 
I was involved in all, and many things. At one point, as a sophomore, there, I had 24 credits. The maximum loan was supposed to be 16. I had 24 credits. Had a 3.9. Did very well. But also, on the other side, I was experimenting with every drug that was available to man. And in California, it's more wicked and much more potent. My roommate was a drug dealer. Everything was free. Cocaine, marijuana, LSD. I think some nice PCP moved through there. Everything moved through there. And I spent with all of it. I soared to the heights of academia. And still was unfulfilled. Played in the band out there, still was unfulfilled. Went over to England. Studied at the University of Kent in Canterbury my junior year. Was an English major. A.R. Lee, the top or one of the top literary critics in all of Europe, was a, he was my teacher. And he took a great interest in me. He thought he saw a great potential in me. And uh, he introduced me to that point, the, the, the leading Afro-American writer in the world, Ishmael Reed at that point. I met the man. Ishmael Reed wanted, saw a great potential in me, wanted to work with me. But still, I was unfulfilled. I worked for the newspaper there. I was a journalist for the University of Kent and Canterbury, that, that paper. Wrote articles that were considered to be very good, had things published, poetry, but I was still unfulfilled because I did not know the Lord's vision for my life. Came back here at MSU, did a whole bunch of things, had a scholarship, uh, went, went to the community college for a little while, had a scholarship at the MSU, and I was getting $2,000 a semester just to go there. As a young man, that was a, that was a good thing. But still I was unfulfilled. Had a quote-unquote girlfriend, was fornicating, playing in a band, was starting to get known, we had a tape out, people were invited, us playing different uh, clubs and places. I was writing for a newspaper again, uh, eventually was in a, was in a, a class, and uh, William Penn, another published top writer in this country, had me, he wanted to take me under his wing, and he saw the potential. And uh, we would go to Canada, do poetry and short story readings, had things published, went to writers' conferences, but I was still unfulfilled no matter how much success I had in the world because I did not know my creator, God's vision for my life. But then in April, 1991, as a senior at Michigan State University, Doing well academically, but also marred in the depths of sin. Fornicating, drinking every day, smoking marijuana, taking LSD, snorting cocaine. My God, all those things. I was invited to a meeting, like, a, like here today. And I don't remember what the man said, but I was sitting there in the pew. I understand. I had rejected Christ at 13. You might be in that boat. You might have known him before, but maybe you're not walking with him now, but that can change today. I rejected Jesus at 13. I was a, a confessed atheist uh, by the time I was in my late teens. I had studied in the process. Uh, uh, Islam, I used to own a Quran, read the Quran. Then in the Bhagavad Gita, I used to have a copy, read that in, uh, in, uh, in Hinduism. I, read the, re, 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 I also read the Buddhist texts, studied Buddhism, uh, Judaism, uh, read it, uh, studied it, went to speak to a rabbi, all these things. I had gone the gamut of religious belief, philosophy. I was a confirmed atheist in existentialism. Existentialist, read uh, 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 Freud, or oh, Freud in psychoanalysis, but read, uh, read Sartre and Camus, Ionesco, all of the French existentialists, which were the most demonic, the most Nietzsche, who said God is dead. Oh, he was my, he was my, he was my mentor back before I was saved. Believers would come to me, and I would, I, I would say, if they weren't armed, I would talk them out of what they believed, but I was not moved. But I was in the pew on that day in April, that evening, April 1991. And I don't remember the guy I was talking about, but I heard a voice in my head, the devil, all the things I'd studied. I also had studied sorcery. And I won't get into particulars with that, because you don't, you don't need to know that. The Bible says, Paul says, I wish you would be ignorant of evil. So I was knowledgeable of evil. Thank God, now I'm knowledgeable of good through Jesus Christ. But I was in that pew, and a voice said to me, you need to go up and tell all these people, you Christians are crazy. They don't know anything. You need to teach them the truth. For the first time, I heard a still small voice speak to my heart and said, you need to go up there and see if all those things you've studied are real. No one moved at the altar call, but I did. The next thing I know, I'm halfway down the aisle. I went up, and I repented. I asked Jesus Christ to save because I knew I'd done wrong. I knew I was not living right. I knew the young lady I was fornicating with who wanted to marry me, who I had no intention of marrying in the world. I knew I was wrong what I did against her, against my body, but mostly against the God who created me that I've been denying now for 10 years. I repented. Asked Christ to save me and cleanse me. 
I went into the next room. They said, we're going to lay hands on you. And you'll be filled with the Holy Spirit that happens to be in tongues. I never heard of that. When I was young, I'd grown up in a, the Catholic religion. I had never been born again. Never heard of being born again. Never heard about Christ personally. All I knew was religion. And I left that the minute I got out of high school. I never knew God. But I asked, I said, okay, I said, told them, whatever God has for me, I want God. I have been searching through anything. By the time I was, at that point, I was sometimes meditating down in my basement for eight hours a day, trying to find God, full of an evil spirit, full of a devil. But I repented. I asked Jesus Christ to save me. Then they, I, they took me to the, next, to the other room. They laid hands on me. I, I opened my mouth. I started speaking a language I never heard. And I left that meeting not knowing everything theologically or doctrinally, but knowing one thing, that Jesus Christ is Lord and that truth is not another philosophy. I started studying college, university philosophy, when I was 11 years old. So I studied a lot of philosophy in my day. But, Jesus, but truth was not a philosophy or an ideology. It was not theology. It was a person. And his name is Jesus Christ. Amen. From that moment, I started going everywhere telling everyone about the Lord. I did every day, never saw anyone respond for two years. I didn't know any Christians. I didn't have a church. I didn't know you're supposed to go to church. I was on my own, the Lord, reading the Bible, praying, fasting. But then, over time, I didn't find a church. The Lord led me. And the first person who repented and got saved, he was a Jew. He could trace his history back a thousand years. He was the only one who ever had repented and gotten saved and served the true Messiah, Jesus. So we want to encourage you. You might be here and you might say a number of things, but Jesus Christ can bring salvation to your life, and when you know his vision, he'll transform you and use you to transform the world if you believe him, believe him obey him, and follow him by the Bible. Amen? Amen. Praise Amen. the Lord. Spirit of God, I just wanted someone to know that. I was not intending to give anything of my testimony. I was intending to go right to Mark 16. Well, this is what Mark 16 is, what he calls us to as a body and what he'll do in your life. Mark chapter Amen. 16. And we'll look at verse... 15. Jesus will set you free. I was bound and dabbled in everything. And now I'm free. free. More free than a bird. <laughs> as free as the Son of God, because I'm in him and he's in me. And uh, you can be free too. You know, he saved me, delivered me. That was, he healed me. I had torn up my knee. I had to have a, a cartilage shave out of my knee when I was a senior and high school, playing football, and I had excruciating pain because it was bone on bone. But uh, I was in a meeting. He said, we're going to have, and many people have been healed in this church. And, my, and he just testified to being healed from schizophrenia, delivered. Hallelujah. Mm -hmm. He said, he came up, hands were laid, and boom! The power of God delivered him by the grace of God. But I had bone on bone, and they said, okay, we're going to have a prayer. I said, okay, whatever God is from the Lord, I want it. Laid hands, and he's fine. That's been almost 30 years. And whatever you have, he'll do it in your life too. Because Jesus Christ is the same yesterday, today, and forever. And he is the Lord God above all. Amen? Amen. Matthew, or Mark 16, let's look at verse 15. Down to verse 14. I'll read it. Afterward, he appeared unto the eleven as they sat at meat, and abated them with the unbelief and hardness of heart, because they believed not them which had seen him after he was risen. 15. And he said unto them, Go ye into all the world and preach the gospel to every creature. 16. He that believeth and is baptized shall be what? Saved. Saved. But he that believeth not shall be damned. 17. And these signs shall follow them that believe. In my name shall they do what? Cast out devils. Hallelujah. They shall speak with what? New tongues. New tongues. If you're a believer, that's what's next for you if you're obeying Christ. In Jesus' name. Verse 18, they shall take up serpents, and if they drink any deadly thing, it shall not hurt them. They shall lay hands on the sick, and they shall recover. 19. So then after the Lord had spoken unto them, he was received up into heaven and sat on the right hand of God. 20. And they went forth and preached everywhere, the Lord working with them and confirming the word, with signs following. Amen. Amen. What is Christ's vision for his global and local church corporate as a body, as a group? The scripture tells us here that we're to preach the gospel to every creature, lay hands on the sick and have them recover, cast out devils, and bring each person into the kingdom of God. Amen. Amen. 
This is Christ's corporate vision for his corporate body. Turn with me now to Matthew 28, please. Matthew chapter 28. Matthew 28. Number one, Christ's vision, we see, is for his corporate body to preach the gospel to every creature. That means in your home. If there are people there, you're there to preach the gospel to them. Do you understand? In your neighborhood, you're there to preach your gospel to those who you meet. In the local uh, uh, a grocery store, on the streets, Amen. on the internet, through the phone, your purpose in interacting with people is to preach the gospel to them. If you're a Christian, your purpose is to spread Christ to those you encounter. Do you understand? Amen. 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 We see some scripture, isn't it? And we started in verse 14, for Christ said to the eleven, that was the church of Jesus at that time. We see in Acts, well, in a moment we'll see what he said to them. And they carried it out. So, if you're preaching the gospel, you're right on track. Continue. If you're not, today's a good day to start. Amen? <laughs> because Christ commands it. Matthew 28, verse 18. Let's look at verse 16. Then the eleven disciples went away into Galilee, into a mountain where Jesus had appointed them. 17. And when, he saw, when they saw him, they worshipped him, but some doubted. 18. And Jesus came and spake unto them, saying, All power is given unto me in heaven and in earth. 19. Go ye therefore and teach all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Ghost. 20. Teaching them to observe all things whatsoever I have commanded you. And lo, I am with you always, even unto the end of the world. Amen. Amen. We see in addition to preaching the gospel to every creature, Christ says his vision for us as a body is to teach all nations everything he has taught them. Do you understand? Why are we to do this? Well, he tells us in verse 18, because all power in heaven and earth is given unto Jesus. Amen? Amen. So we need to teach people that they don't have to be under the tyranny of sin. Jesus died and rose to destroy the power of sin in Jesus' name. They don't have to be possessed with devils. They don't have to be bound with sickness. They don't have to be bound with drugs, alcohol, pornography, hatred, bitterness, depression, loneliness, anger, fear, confusion. They can be freed by Christ, for whomsoever the Son of God set free is free indeed in the name of Jesus. So we need to tell the people the good news. We need to tell them they can be free. Most people don't really believe they can be free. Right now, the psychiatrist's office, psychologist's office, medical doctor's office, the lawyer's office, the, the various uh, 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 professionals in society's offices are full of people trying to get a freedom they can only get through Christ. Amen. We have the good news. The secular world does not. People are trying to buy scientific products. They're trying to find some breakthrough. People are jettisoning, jettisoning into space, trying to find life. But Jesus is the way, the truth, and the life. No one comes to the Father but through him. Do you understand? So we have the answer to the world's problems, and the answer is Jesus, and we need to, we need to tell them. Amen. Amen. Go with me if you went to Luke 24. Luke 24. How or what should we do in preaching the gospel to every creature and teaching all nations. What should we do? And that's why we have Myanmar for Jesus week, even this week, and Myanmar for Jesus Sunday, even today. This will be the 22nd nation that uh, I'll be going to preach in the gospel to and to teach uh, apostles, prophets, evangelists, pastors, and teachers, and uh, Christians what Christ has commanded us to take that nation for Jesus. And I want to tell you, the Lord is good. Bible says in the mouth of two or three witnesses that every word be established. I'll tell you more about this later uh, concerning me and Mark for Jesus. Uh, but um, we've been invited to that nation since Biak Ling Sang. Maybe Biak will get this uh, DVD and see it. We're mentioning Biak Ling Sang first invited us to Myanmar, formerly Burma, in um, 2007. And probably yearly we've been having, having invitations from different preachers uh, to this country. But just yesterday, it's been a little while. Uh, now, Apostle Sang Solomon, uh, Solomon Kang is now an extension of the ministry, so is Mr. National in Yangon. We'll be meeting him in a short time. But uh, just yesterday, I was thinking I had a lot of things to do, and I went down to the office, and I was getting ready for prayer, and I just sensed an impression to open up the 
email and check it. I did, and what is it in confirmation? Another invitation from another preacher in Yangon, Myanmar. He wants to be an extension of the ministry to do the work of the Lord there and take Myanmar for Jesus. Amen. Well, it's confirming he's sending people, that's 10,000 miles away, Amen. to want to do this work. Amen. This vision is the Lord's. Amen. Not mine, not yours, the Lord, that he's called us to assist him in fulfilling it. Amen? Amen. 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 You have a place and a part in his vision. Luke 24, and let's look at verse 45. The scripture reads, Then opened he their understanding, that they might understand the scriptures. 46. And he said unto them, Thus it is written, and thus it behooved Christ to suffer, and to rise from the dead the third day. 47. And that repentance and remission of sins should be preached in his name among all nations beginning at Jerusalem. And ye are witnesses of these things. Amen. Amen. What must we do in preaching the gospel to every creature? Preaching here in Lansing, preaching throughout Michigan, preaching in the United States, preaching in all the 196 countries on the earth, 241 territories on the earth, including Myanmar, uh, uh, Southeast Asia, within the next month. What should we do? Well, we see here in Luke 24, 47, we need to preach repent, <laughs> repentance and remission of sins in Christ's name to every creature on earth. Amen? Amen. Amen. This is very important. The people in Myanmar don't realize that there's repentance and remission of sins in the name of Jesus. Amen. We might have heard of this country, but they have not. 85% of that country, of approximately 30 million, are Buddhists. And they don't believe in remission of sins, not only in Jesus' name, they do not believe in remission of sins in any name. In Buddhism, whether it's, uh, whether it's Vedic or Mahayanic Buddhism, people believe there, they've been deceived to believe in the cycle of rebirth. It's believed that because of bad karma, because of the bad things people do, which the Bible calls sins, instead of people, stay, as, as Hebrews 9, 27 says, and as it is appointed unto man once to die, but after this the judgment, but the devil is deceived them, and they don't believe that. They don't know the truth yet. They believe after death, the body will go through, or the spirit will go through a transmigration of soul. And a process of rebirth, a cycle of rebirth. That's part of what's called the Eightfold Path in Buddhism. The body will die, and the spirit will go and be reincarnated or reborn into another form. Whether a pig, or a fly, or a dog, or a prince, or a bodhisattva, whatever. They believe this will continue for hundreds and thousands, maybe millions, billions, trillions of years, till finally they reach the prize. What's the prize? The prize is nothingness. Complete extinguishing of consciousness. Nothingness is the prize. And the devil has deceived that entire country and millions around the world of this. Muslims do not realize that there's repentance and remission of sins in the name of Jesus. They believe by following the Quran, the surahs and the hadiths, they believe by, by adhering to the five pillars of Islam. Notice how all these religions have numbers they put on it, rules, uh, 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 ways they think to get in there, of uh, getting to God. But Jesus says he is the way. Yeah. Christian is not a set of rules. It's not just a set of, of prescriptions. It's a person, a person that's Jesus. Hallelujah. So the Muslims believe by following the five pillars of Islam, to pray the Shalat towards Mecca every day, to hear the, the fast of Ramadan, to take the Hajj, that, that's the pilgrimage to Mecca, by giving 40% of their alms to the poor, Muslim, and by, re re by reading of the surahs. And, and surahs and, but there's also a sixth, a, a a sixth pillar in original Islam, you find it. And that's jihad. Jihad. In the Arabic, it means to kill the kafirs, the unbelievers. Now listen to what Muslims say to this country, scholars, they say who've been, uh, who've been westernized. They say, oh, no, jihad just means inner struggle. No, it doesn't. Read the Quran. I used to own a Quran. I studied Islam before I got saved. It means to kill the unbelievers. Because whatever Islam's in the minority, they should try to fit in with society and thereby influence it in policy making, through government, in professionalism, in the universities. Get, divide and conquer. Convince of your willingness to submit and conquer. 
But since wherever Islam is the majority, they will cause the people to do one or two things. They either will obey, submit to Islam, and pay the tax, or they'll be killed, or they must leave. That's why right now, in Mogadishu, uh, uh, Mogadishu Samaya, you profess Christ, your head is cut off. And we have a young man who emailed us recently on the border of uh, Somalia and Kenya, and he wants to be a soul his mission international there. And we have the privilege of talking to many Somalians. Our neighbors are from Somalia. We preached to them. I preached to them the first time in 2006. They went wild. They probably never heard the gospel in their country. Anyone who's a Christian is killed. There are maybe 200 Christians estimated in Somalia, and there are no Christian churches. This is what we're supposed to be, the light of the world and on. a voice crying in the wilderness, yes. prepare the way of the Lord, yes. make his path straight. Amen. Saudi Arabia, Christianity is illegal, as in so many other places. Sudan, all of a uh, uh, super-Saharan, uh, Africa, much of Asia now, much of Europe now, many people in the United States. This is an abomination to God. Amen. There's one way, one truth, one life. That's Jesus Christ who died and rose, shed his blood to free mankind, remit mankind's sins, and to repent, believe, and obey the Bible. Amen. There are not one many ways to God. There's one way to God. That way is Jesus. And we deliver it and give it unashamedly and the power of the Holy Ghost to every creature on the face of this earth. Amen. That's what we're doing here. And that is our job as a body. We need to walk in love. I want to encourage you. Be friends and influence people by Dale Carnegie. Carnegie is not the Bible. Being someone's friend is not telling them at all that Christ died and rose to save them. Come on. Be nice, be loving, but give them the truth. Amen. And you can't give the truth until you know the truth and walk in the truth and make the truth your sole reason for existing. Hindus also. My wife and I were there preaching in 2005 in India. 1.5 billion people. A, approximately a fifth, 20% of all the world's population. <laughs> believing there are 33 million gods. That's a logical <coughs> impossibility. Theos in the Greek means the one, supreme. Supreme means one's above the others. They say 33 million are, are equal. We need to tell people of this, of this deception, yeah. that all they're serving, Muslims say they're serving Allah. Uh, uh, Hindus say they're serving Krishna, Shiva, and, 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 and Brahma. Buddhists say they're serving the Buddha. And there's no God in Buddhism. That's why we're getting over there. So the Lord told me on February 20th, go to Myanmar and preach for me. Because they don't believe in God at all. And we need to tell them the truth of Jesus Christ. That God was made a man. He died and rose. Lived a life without sin. Ascended back to heaven. So if we repent, believe and obey him, we can go and have eternal life with him and in him. Jews are still the wailing woe. Oh, oh, wailing and praying for a Messiah to come who's already came 2,000 years ago. They're praying before the temple, praying before the wailing wall, and it's Ichabod. God has departed from them. Why? Because God now has come to earth. He died and rose, sent his spirit, and his spirit with us, with us comes in us and makes our body the taste temple and makes the church his habitation. But most of the people on this earth do not know this. Many believers don't know this. Many believers just think, okay, just being baptized saves me. Just going to church saves me. Just reading the Bible saves me. Your praying saves me. That does not save me. Jesus saves. Amen. And walking in a moment by moment daily fellowship with him through the Holy Ghost, that's what keeps you in salvation. Amen. 1 Peter 1 5, you are kept by the power of God yes, yes. through faith and the salvation to be revealed in heaven and revealed in that last time. So we're to preach repentance and remission of sins. This is our job. We need to be telling people that sin they do is wrong. Jesus died and rose, and he is right. And he will make them righteous if they repent, believe, and follow him with the Bible. That's why after we repent and got saved, we were not translated to heaven. We're here to do our Father's business and win the world for him. John 20. John 20. I rebuke that spirit. Come out of him in Jesus' name. Come out of him in Jesus' name. 
I rebuke that spirit in the name of Jesus. I rebuke you in Jesus' name. John chapter 20. John chapter 20. Verse 19. And then the same day at evening, being the first day of the week, when the doors were shut where the disciples were assembled for fear of the Jews, came Jesus and stood in the midst and said unto them, Peace be unto you. And when he had so said, he showed unto them his hands and his side. Then were the disciples glad when they saw the Lord, 21. Then said Jesus to them again, Peace be unto you. As my Father has sent me, even so send I you. Amen. Amen. Child of God, Christian saint, you are not made just to try to get by, squeeze by, squeak by in this world. You're not made just to live like, just like the world and, 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 and be different on Sunday. Just go and sit in a pew. Go and have a teacher saying, I'm a Christian. No, you're made to be the light of the world, and you're made and you're set to do the exact same thing Jesus Christ did besides his atonement on the cross, dying and rising. We cannot bring anyone through our blood to salvation. We're to give the life of Christ and the word of Christ to the whole world that they might repent, believe, and be saved. You understand? Now, what did the Father send Christ to do? Luke 4. Turn with me to Luke 4. Say, what the Father sent Jesus to do? Jesus has sent, sent me. By the, By the Holy Ghost to do. Luke chapter 4. This is Christ's vision for us as church. Look at the corporate, the body vision of the whole sum of us, the fathers. Luke 4. This is important. Most people only know, I'm not, I'm not trying to be critical, but it's the fact of the matter is, most believers, I, I'm persuaded, don't really know all the purposes for which Jesus Christ came. Most of you ask them, Jesus came on, David died on the cross for my sin. Even atheists say that. Now, that's good to know that. But it's much more than that. That's the beginning. That's the foundation. Christ it came to do more than die on the cross for our sins. And here's something else he came to do. After he died, he rose. He ascended to heaven. He gave the Holy Spirit to give us words so we know what he came to do. Luke 4 and uh, verse 42. And when it was day, he departed and went to a desert place. And the people saw him and came unto him and stayed him that he should not depart from them. 43. And he said unto them, I must preach the kingdom of God to other cities also, for therefore am I sent. Amen. Amen. So what was the purpose of Jesus? Preach the kingdom. Preach the kingdom of God in other cities. So what's your purpose? A couple of people are saying it. Most people are keeping their mouths closed. What's your purpose? Preach the kingdom, Preach the kingdom, of, kingdom of God in other cities also. That means Lansing, Amen. Grand Ledge, Amen. Kalamazoo, Amen. Grand Rapids, Amen. Bay City, throughout Michigan, throughout the United States, Africa, Asia, Europe, and Arctic Australia, the make of America. There are 196 uh, uh, countries in this world. There are 241 territories. There are thousands, maybe millions of cities, maybe billions of cities, I'm not quite sure. But we're supposed to preach the gospel to each one in, each, in, in every place. Now, I want to tell you, maybe not every Christian can go into all the world and preach, but there are other ways that we can, can work together that we as a body can take this world for Jesus. Do you understand? Amen. Amen. So know wherever you are, you're supposed to be preaching repentance and remission of sin in Jesus' name. And you're supposed to go and give the gospel. Preach the kingdom of God wherever you are. You understand? Acts chapter 1 now. Acts 1. There can be no silent Christian. Say, I cannot be, I cannot be. a closet Christian. A closet Christian. Amen. You know, listen, let, me, let me say this, Christians. Listen now. We will not let the homosexuals and the lesbians, and transgenders, and bi, and everything else, L, G, B, Q, T, A, B, C, X, Y, Z, all these demonic names outdo us. If they're coming out of the closet left and right, we're going to come out of the closet and take the whole world. Amen. Come on. Come on. Don't let somebody...
some homosexual outdo you, Christian. Amen. Come on. Right. Don't let any pervert outdo you, see pervert. Yes. yes. I said P E R V E R T. Yes. The Bible speaks of a perverse spirit. Yes. And any man who has lust for a man that is perverse, yes. it's wrong thinking, yes. wrong feeling. Yes. Any woman with a desire to be a woman, be a woman is perverse. Yes. The thinking has been it's been changed. It's yes. been twisted. The word perverse means twisted in the Greek. Any man who thinks he's a woman inside is listening to a devil. That is an evil spirit. Any woman thinks she's a man. That is a devil. It cannot be counseled out. It must be cast out. Prozac or Halidol or Risperol or Xanax, my God, or Valium can't change him. Or the Holy Ghost can't change him through the shed blood of Jesus Christ. This is why we need to go worldwide with the gospel of Jesus. People are dying and going to hell in demonic deception. Because yes, yes, they don't know the truth. And that truth is with us to give to them. Amen. 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 Hallelujah. Praise Lord. Acts chapter 1. Say glory to God. Glory, glory to God. God. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Acts 1 verse 4. And being assembled... Together with them, this is Jesus Christ after he died and rose, and his resurrection, before his ascension, his assembled with the apostles, his disciples. Before and being assembled together with them, commanded them that they should not depart from Jerusalem, but wait for the promise of the Father, which saith he, ye have heard of me. Wow. For John truly baptized with water, but ye shall be baptized with who? Holy Ghost. You shall be baptized with who? The Holy Ghost. You shall be baptized with who? The Holy, Holy Ghost. Ghost. Many believers know of one baptism, baptism of water. But Jesus spoke of another baptism. But he, he speaks only of the baptism with the Holy Ghost. In the same way you are covered with water, showing your dead to sin, dead to the old life, and you come up alive in Christ, so you be covered with the Holy Ghost, showing you're dead to your own, your own ability, dead to the world, dead to how you used to live, and now life live in the power of Jesus. Water baptism is a sign that now you've died to your old character and you're alive in the character of Christ. Holy Ghost baptism is a sign you've died to your old power and now you're alive to the power of Christ. Do you understand? Amen. The purpose of the baptism is not just to speak in tongues. As that power will go through your life is set to deceive the demonic world free in Jesus Christ. Do you understand? Amen. It goes on to say, verse 6, When they therefore were come together, they asked of him, saying, Lord, wilt thou this time restore again the kingdom to Israel? Seven. And he said unto them, It is not for you to know the times and the seasons which the Father hath put in his own what? Power. In his own power. So the times and seasons work by God's power. I guess it's wisdom. People are trying to find the times and seasons eschatologically and every uh, theologically and, uh, and meteorologically. They're trying to find all these things and according to their wisdom. But it's in the Father's power. Do you understand? When we do what he says in verse 8, we'll find Christ being able to come a lot sooner. Verse 8. But ye shall receive what? Power. power. So the Father has power, and you're supposed to receive this power. Yeah. After the Holy Ghost has come upon you. After the who has come upon you? Holy Ghost. The Holy Ghost. He is the divine, the divine power of God. He is God, the Holy Ghost. He'll give you all the power in the Father and through the Son that God has in his kingdom for you. Yeah. To yeah. give to the world, dying and heading to hell outside of you. See, power after the Holy Ghost has come upon you, and you shall be what? Witnesses. Witnesses. You shall be what? Witnesses. You shall, now notice what it says. It's what's called in the Greek an aorist tense. It's saying you shall be a witness. You shall be a witness. It doesn't say you shall witness. It also says, oh yeah, I'm going to go to witness for Jesus. There's really no such thing biblical. It's saying you have, you're having a change in the state and the nature of your being. When the Holy Ghost comes upon you, he makes you new on the inside. That is someone with you, giving you words, counseling you to talk in the flesh. No, he takes possession, he takes residence, and he thinks through your mind, speaks through your mouth, he loves through your heart, he walks through your legs, he lives through you like he lived through Christ, and he transforms others through you in Jesus' name. Amen. You shall be a witness. You have now a changed, transformed state of being in Christ. Who you were, you are no more. Now you're him, wall to wall, God, possessed with God, with the power of God to give victory to the world through Jesus Christ. Amen. If you can't say amen. 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 The Lord is great. 
Young man just testified. He came in. He's got to this state. He's been having schizophrenic symptoms every day for four years. He came in. Hands were laid. It's gone. Many have come in. Schizophrenia in the natural, in the psychological, it's incurable. We had people cured. One was set free in 2010. Another one in the church hasn't had an episode in years. Another one, there are many who've been dying with us who've been set free Amen. by the power of Jesus. Amen. Many are bound by cigarettes and alcohol. One man, we, we fellowship with him, he came over to our house, a, a new, a new uh, visitor here. He said, I thank the Lord. He said, I came to the service, and something was said by the Spirit of God that you don't have, you can submit to God or to the devil, and, he'll, and the devil will flee from you. And so I chose, I repent, I submit, repent of cigarettes as a sin. It was said that I need to do everything under the Lord. I've been trying to smoke for good health, for my family, for all these things. I've been trying to put it away, I'm sorry, for good health, for my family, to be a good citizen. But when I realized I had to do everything for Jesus, I repented of it, put it away, and I've been free ever since. Amen. Instant deliverance. No more patch, no more this. My God's the power of Jesus. Amen. We need to take this to the world so they can also be set free as we've been set free in Christ. That's why you're here. It's why you're alive. It's why you're born again. It's why you're a Christian. It's why the Holy Ghost is with you and he wants to come in and fill you. Amen. You see the power of the Holy Ghost coming upon you. You shall be witnesses unto me. Where? Both in where? Verse 8. Both in where? Jerusalem. Jerusalem. And in all Judea. And in Samaria. Under the uttermost parts of the earth. Amen. Amen. Jerusalem, speaking of your hometown. Family, Come on. friends, yes. near kins, yes. relatives, neighborhood. Yes. Be a witness to all of them. Tell them all. Jesus died and rose to save them if they repent, believe, and obey his word. Amen. Live a holy life by the Bible. Let us tell them Jesus died and rose to save them, but they cannot be a Muslim and be saved. They cannot be a Buddhist and be saved. Cannot be an atheist, agnostic, homosexual, lesbian. Cannot be a Hindu. Cannot follow a, a Buddhist. A, 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 cannot follow Judaism and be saved. They must leave sin, leave religion, leave self, leave the world, and cleave to Christ. Amen. We live in a pluralistic, relativistic society. Oh, there are many truths. There are many ways to God. Live and let live. Believe and let believe. No, Christ says He's the only way. Yeah. And he preached, repent, yes. turn, yes. change, yes. and believe anything. Yes. Believe the gospel. Yes. Believe the gospel. Yes. These people need to repent. Believe the gospel. Yes. We're going to Myanmar. We tell them in a month. If you stand says we're going to Burundi. We tell them in August. Repent. Believe the gospel. And we continue until he returns. Amen. Amen. Until he has us in every nation and territory. As soon as mission national, then planting churches throughout all the cities, provinces, districts, regions, in the bush, in the village, and then going and reaching all the seven billion souls on the earth. That's what you're believing. That's what I'm believing. I have it up in my office. I'm confessing and speaking every day. Confessing and praying for it. That drives me day in and day out to see the world saved to glorify Jesus. Amen. And may it drive you too. Amen. Because that's where your purpose and fulfillment lies. In fulfilling the Christ's vision for your life, the church, and the world. Amen. 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 Rise from day and night. Hallelujah. Christ's vision. July 15, 1993. 10 o'clock in the morning, Friday. Kansas City, Kansas, Kansas City, Kansas. The Lord appeared to me. He said, go into all the world. Preach the gospel to every creature. You will lay hands on the sick and they will recover. You will, you will cast out devils. All the things. I didn't know it was Mark 16, 15. I didn't know that. This happened, I saw him, and it seemed like five minutes. It was three and a half hours, the vision was. After that, some of you have heard this, some of you have not. I was in a meeting, and a man, from, a man was staring at me. Back then, this is what, 30 years ago, 25 years ago? I had much hair standing, I looked much younger, my hair was long. And a man looked at me. He said, young man, come over. He said, how old are you? 19? I said, 25. He said, young man, there's a great call. The Lord has a great call from God upon and everything the Lord told me in the vision, he appeared to me, the man said word by word. He was a man from Kentucky, a prophet. I've never, I never met him. Then he, said, and then he took me under his, to his contemporaries. He said, hey, he said, you see the call of God, this young man? Some say no. Some say yeah. <coughs> he had me. He said, come on, pray for him. He said, young man, the Lord's anointed. Go ahead. And they're deaf mute. and laid hands. Ears were open. Some people I prayed for. There was no, appear, no, no, uh, no visible sign. And that continues to this day. 
But it doesn't matter if the Lord appears to you personally as he has, or if he speaks into you through his word. His vision for all of us is the same, to live the gospel and give it to everyone. Amen. What will it profit you and what will it profit me to gain the whole world and lose our soul? Or to gain the whole world for us and see the souls of those who know and perish in hell? Because we chose not to tell them because it was socially unacceptable. Because we didn't want to run the risk of them rejecting us. So we'd rather run the risk of them rejecting Christ. <laughs> Wake up, church! Worldwide. And serve the Lord! Live holy! Live the gospel! And preach it unashamedly in the power of the Holy Ghost! Jerusalem's your surroundings. Judea, speaking of the religious community. <laughs> preach in church. Go to church where they don't believe about preaching. We went to the largest church in this, in this country many years ago, back in 2005 in Houston, Texas. We preached to the people. They were very open. They seemed as if they never heard anything about repentance, faith, and living holy. <clears throat> what was the name of that church? It was called uh, Lakewood, Joel Olstein. We're preaching there. People seem like they never heard the message of repentance, <laughs> salvation, living hope. But yet, there's more, more people that, in that group than there in the unknown country. But you can't be saved without repenting. Amen. You can't be saved and go to sinless heaven if you still have sin in your life. Amen. But yet, they, they all were very thankful. But they seemed like they never heard it. They, none of them could say they were living. They didn't seem like they even heard about what such a thing is. Preaching Judea. Years ago, and I preached in the, in, the, in the Sharizetic congregation, Jewish synagogue. It was the Day of Atonement. No direction to me. I didn't know it was the Day of Atonement. I, it's a long testimony I won't go into. I stood up when the, past, when, the, when, the, when the rabbi sat down. There was no one in the pulpit. I stood up, the congregation on 500, and preached the gospel that Jesus Christ is your atonement. Amen. That what you're doing, these are dead forms. He shed his blood. He's the Passover lamb that cleansed your sins. They went crazy. I went, ah! An old woman, but oh, they came, they grabbed me, yeah. and they're gonna they, they, they move physically moved me out of there. Yeah. Like they throw if there was a hill, they would have thrown me over, like they tried to throw Jesus. <laughs> Preach in Judea. Yeah, yeah. come on, they got to know. I the Muslims, and then you too. <laughs> we need to tell them the truth. Yes. Samaria, the undesirables. <laughs> Preach the homosexuals. Lesbians, transgenders, bisexuals, deviants, drug addicts, alcoholics, liars, mentally disturbed, homeless, foolish. People that most people ignore, we have to embrace and preach to. We're not supposed to, be, we're not supposed to walk through lives as bystanders. Life is not a sports event where we just watch on the sides what's going on on the, on the main court or playing field. We need to get on the field, Christian, and, and give the gospel. We've already won through Christ. It's time we do something about it and help the losers in the world become winners. And who the losers? Anyone not, not in Jesus. That's right. That's right. Anyone not in Jesus is losing their soul in the midst yes, of losing yes. their soul. Yes, yes, yes. And gaining eternity like a fire. Unless the Lord does something for them through us yielding to him. And in the uttermost parts of the earth, that's why we're going to Myanmar, Africa, Asia, Europe, Antarctica, Australia, South America, America, North America, and South America, North America. We've been to the four continents so far, which are 21 nations now, we the 22nd, and then in August the 23rd. We're going to continue on until it's 196 and 241 territories. Why? Christ said it. People use, people use, and this is uh, just telling you Christ's vision for his church, the global church, uh, corporately, but the local church here. So you can understand what you're a part of. Lord has you here to be a soul winner. The name is not an accident. That's who we're supposed to be. Proverbs 11.30, he, the, free, the root of the righteous is a tree of life, and he that winneth souls is wise. Amen. The word winneth in the Hebrew means to take, seize. Same thing it says in Matthew 11, 12. 12. The kingdom of heaven suffers violence, and the violence take, seize it by force. 
It's not a passive endeavor. Now you sit there and analyze how someone's doing and say, well, should I preach them or not? Well, maybe I have too many things to do. I really have no, I really don't care about them really anyway. I know I'm supposed to because I'm supposed to care. So uh, let me go about my daily duties and uh, Lord, may someone else reach them. Lord, oh, I don't have time. You know, I've worked hard. I have to go home and watch some TV. I have to go home and have a dinner and then I've got to fill my belly with that food that I'm going to treat maybe within a, a couple hours. He didn't win his souls as wise. Yes, yes, yes. Well, Lord, you know, I, I can't preach. I, I gotta win the lottery. You know, Lord, I've gotta win this, I've gotta win this ticket for this. I've gotta win this game. I've gotta win the, the, this person's affection. Lord, I'm everything but winning souls. Oh, help us, help us, help us. This is Christ's vision. We win souls. This is the vision of this church. Winning souls. People take Mark 16, 15, go to the world and preach all vision, and they, you know, they just say it, they have another slogan, they do nothing about it. Not to be critical, most churches do not work missionarily. They don't practice missiology. And those, they might support churches physically, financially. But usually most apostles, prophets, evangelists, pastors don't go themselves because the initial apostles do as we do. And many of them don't do anything Many meet for an hour and maybe, maybe 15 minutes of encouragement from the Word of God, maybe a scripture or two. And the people are homosexuals, lesbians. Some of these places have homosexual and lesbian so called preachers. And people are doing all kinds of things in the congregation, fornicating, getting drunk. Lying, cursing, not reading the Bible, not praying, and as long, hey, just keep it quiet. As long as it's not affecting anyone, just your, 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 your life's your own, do whatever you want. Don't let us know about it. That's not the gospel. That's not the gospel. That's the go not the gospel. Jesus said, go and sin no more. He said, sin no more. That's the worst thing come unto you. So we also live a holy life, and we tell others that. But also, we take this church and I, the one the Lord called to be a vessel through which he founded it, planted here, to get very important. When he said that to me, I immediately started going everywhere. I was already preaching, but I started going everywhere. I still don't only preach to thousands in crusades and having churches in various places in the open air. But I still, wherever I see someone, I'll preach to. And Jesus deserves that. He deserves that from you and from me. And there's nothing more important than human lives. Tell me right now, and tell the Lord right now, what's more important? And your salvation is the salvation of someone else. Nothing. So then what can justify us not telling them? Nothing. Or participating in other ways that we're going to see for the salvation of the world. He's entrusted that to 11 men. And it's some total of 120, and they turned the world upside down in Acts 17, 6. Mm -hmm. Now there are over a billion who profess faith in Christ, mm -hmm. and the world's not being turned upside down, it's staying upside down. Mm -hmm. What's the difference? Love for Christ and love for souls. What's the difference? Love the Lord thy God with all thy heart, mind, and soul, and love thy neighbor as thyself. On these two commandments hang all the law and the prophets. Amen. Let's do the word of God. Let's love God and people by giving them the gospel. Amen. Amen. So we go everywhere preaching the gospel. That's Christ's vision for his church. Lastly, we receive the Holy Ghost power to be transformed into witnesses. Witness means a martyr. It's martyrs in the Greek. It means evidence of the truth. It's not just about us going and apologetically convincing intellectually right. believers Buddhism is wrong, Hindu is wrong, Hinduism is wrong, Judaism. No, the Holy Ghost, God, who knows Jesus, God, is to be with and in us and convince them inside their conscience, inside their spirit, that Jesus really is the only truth on the earth. We're going to be filled with him. It doesn't mean you just repent, 
believe, ask in the feeling, you speak in tongues, and then you and then you live, you drain, you let the Holy Ghost drain out of your life because of sin and worldliness, and you just you just on your church, you're, you're focused on Jesus, but the rest of the time, you're focused on the world for many things. So there's no power because there's not a love of, of Jesus, a love of the world. The Word of God says, Saints, love not the world, 1 John 2. Not the things that are in the world, verse 15. For he that loveth the world hath not the love of the Father in him. And all that is in the world, the lust of the flesh, the lust of the eyes, the pride of life, is not of the Father, but is of the world. And the world passes away in the lust thereof, but he that doeth the will of God abideth forever. Some of you are looking at me with, 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 with surprised expressions. Maybe not familiar with this. Turn with me to 1 John 2. The Holy, this is the Holy Ghost Church that directs us according to what he sees people need. Amen. Not according to what I have written down on this piece of paper. 1 John chapter 2. We're going to read it together. So we can see what the Word of God says and why the body of Christ has been so, oh Lord help me to be nice, so pathetically powerless. First John chapter 2, verse 15. We'll read together. 15 through 17. Let's read it loud, nice and loud. Faith comes by hearing, hearing by the word of God. It doesn't say faith comes by reading. Faith comes by what? Hearing. 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 We'll speak it loud so you can hear it. Get down your spirit. And may your mind be renewed and your life transform. First John 2, 15. 1, 2, 3. Let's read. Love not the world, neither the things that are in the world. If any man love the world, the love of the Father is not in him. 16. For all that is in the world, the lust of the flesh and the lust of the eyes and the pride of life is not of the Father, but is of the world. 17. And the world passeth away, and the lust thereof. But he that doeth the will of God abideth forever. Amen. Amen. Love of the world. Oh, I love its music, its DVDs, its TV, its movies, its books, its people. Now understand, the earth, oh, I love its green. The earth is the Lord's, the fullness thereof, the world and they that dwell therein, Psalm 24, 1. The earth is God's, but the world speaking of the system of thought and practice of the unregenerate, unsaved people. If we have the same joys that the unsaved do, there's a problem. If no one knows that we're saved, besides just saying it, but think we're just a worldly person, there's a problem. But the good news is the Holy Ghost, when we are packed with Jesus and are filled with him, he will make the difference, do you understand? People will sense his presence in you. And sense his presence through you. And his power will come through your life. Amen. People saved, healed, delivered will become the regular occurrence in your daily walk. How many of you want that? Amen. But there is a requirement. We must surrender to Jesus. Let me say this. The Spirit of God told me to say this. You know, many people don't hear the voice of the Lord. You know why? Because many people don't want to hear what he's saying to them. They don't want to hear him saying, give that up. Yes. Turn that loose. Yes. Do this. Yes. Come on. Yes, That's why in this, in this, in this country, in worldwide, you have what are called church hoppers. Mm. Or people call them kangaroo Christians. They'll hop to one church. As soon as something is said that would require them to change, they'll hop to another one. As soon as someone says that the Christ will change, they'll hop to another one. Yes. Eventually, they hop out of Christ, they hop into hell. That's right. <laughs> I'm not trying to be unkind. I'm, I'm trying to, I love you. I'm trying to let the Lord you, uh, use this to save you, renew your mind. Amen. Listen, God's word is true no matter who says it. That's right. No matter what you think. Yes. No matter what I think. Amen. No matter where you are, it's still the truth. And when Christ returns, he's going to judge us by this word. Yes. Yes, yes. And his vision for us is we live the gospel and we go into all the world and give it to each person. Yes. And we live a holy life, yes. free from all sin. Amen. People say, oh, well, I, 
I, I think it's okay to fornicate. I'm going to go to this church. This church says the fornication is okay. But Christ doesn't say it is. Well, that, that, that pastor, he's always talking against Islam. I think Islam's okay. I mean, my, in the synagogue, uh, my, my, my rabbi, or in this, in this in, in first, first easygoing church, I mean, they say it's okay, but Jesus does not. We must mature and grow up, saints, and realize life is about submission to Jesus Christ according to his word. Your feelings, my feelings will have no part on the judgment given on the day of judgment. Our experience will mean nothing. It will not sway. You can cry all you want. Jesus Christ will not change his judgment when he returns to judge you by the word of God. That's right. You can gnash your teeth and get mad. You can make a face at him. You can try to walk away from him. You can do all those little manipulative, demonic things you've been getting with all your life. But Christ is going to judge you by the Bible no matter what, how you feel and what you think or not. Lord needs us to mature. <laughs> to no longer live according to our self centered, self gratifying situation, circumstance. We're going to deny ourselves, think about the cross, and follow Him, living a holy life by His Bible and telling everyone. Period. And He'll give grace to do it. We see we can't love the world. If you want the life of Christ, if you want the power of Christ's living word, you've got to turn loose the ungodly world. And he will give you grace to do it. We love the people, but we cannot have fellowship with them while they are not loving Christ and obeying him. Say, Lord, bless you. Talk to them, pray for them, give them the gospel, but... Close fellowship, what that does is the evil spirit in their life starts to, like a vampire, suck the spiritual life out of your life. You wonder why you leave the presence heavy and down and scourged because the evil spirit in them is overpowering the greater Holy Ghost in you that you are denying, that you're not submitting to. You know how to have the mastery in every situation, believer? Open your mouth and let the Lord, the Lion of the tribe of Judah, roar out of your heart. Walk in the authority of Christ, the dominion of Christ. You walk on a job, by God, and you, no, no, no matter if you're if you're the, 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 the sweeper, the authority of Christ will put you above because you are above. Amen. People will know a dignitary has walked in, the Holy Ghost has walked in through you. But the king of kings through you. Do you understand? The Lord wants to believe. I just go into all the worlds we're going to talk about. But he wants on your job. The authority and truth of Jesus Christ shown and spoken of by the Holy Ghost with it in you. Amen. Before I came into ministry and worked in the second world, wherever it's just the Lord. Wherever I'd go, people would get saved. I'd be threatened to be fired many times. I would not be belligerent. I wouldn't say a word. I'd work. But well, besides I work, when people come to me, I'd give the gospel to customers, co-workers. They got saved. They got healed. Some got healed. That's how they got saved. The boss came. I'd be humble. I didn't know. He said, he said, Michael, you're one of the best workers here. I don't want to let you go, but you're talking about your religion. I just listened to him patiently. <laughs> then I, I could not let souls go. I could always have gotten another job. I was in school, working, and in school full time. I gave the gospel. Did you ever get fired? Never. Never got fired. But souls got out of hell's fire. Amen. Why? Because I'm bold? No. Because I like to do it? No. Because the Holy Ghost. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You're filled with the Holy Ghost, not just one time speaking tongues. Every moment of every day, you have a refilling. You pray in the Spirit. You speak the Word of God. You worship the Lord. You walk in the Spirit and live in the Spirit, and He lives through you. Now, I'm sure I'd witness to my professors. I wouldn't stand up and interrupt a class. And as I raised my hand, in one class they banned me from speaking the whole year because I was disproving what the professor said by the Bible. And I was just two years old in faith. He was only 70 years old. He wasn't preaching the Bible, so I'd say, sir, the Bible says this. Oh, I'm going to ban you from speaking the whole year. So I'd raise my hand, he wouldn't call him. 
The other class, I rose as lecture time, I raised my, my hand, answered the question with the scripture. <laughs> class around lecture, class around 400. Why? Because I was bold. Besides preaching the gospel, I didn't say much. I still don't say too much besides what it's just the scripture and the things of God. But no, I was constrained. The spirit within me constrained me. That Christ died for all. That all were dead. They need to repent, believe, and be saved through Jesus. Amen. I mean, it's what would it profit me and them to gain the world, lose their soul in hell? At school, at work, in the community. We need to tell the world about Jesus. Sure, it will cost you. I've been kicked out of probably every place I can think of. But I've not been kicked out of the kingdom of God. Amen. And neither will you be if you'll give it all for Christ. With all kinds, some of you are still holding back part of your life with Jesus. But I want to encourage you. The Holy Ghost is here to help you surrender it all today. And out of that surrendered life, he'll manifest the, the power of Jesus to set the world free like you've been set. Amen. Amen. Don't love the word, world. Live in the living word, Jesus. So first we're to preach the gospel, teach all nations. Now go with me to Matthew 9. You say, well, pastor, I, I don't know if I can go to all the world and preach the gospel to 196 countries as the Lord's put on your heart in 241 territories and see churches planted around the world. Well, that's probably good. Because if you go and the Lord not called you, it will fail. See what? Pastor, you've seen, haven't you seen thousands saved, healed, delivered? I have. And how'd you do that? I didn't do it. The Holy Ghost did it. Because he called me to do it. You see? But if we're not called specifically then, we still as a body work together to see the job done by the Holy Ghost through his yielded vessel, the body of Christ. Do you understand? Amen. What else can we do if we're not called? We're called in our community. Your, your community might be your, your, your household, your Jerusalem. Judea might be a, a professed believer you know. And remember, who might be walking the walk, might not, might not be walking the talk, they're talking, gently encouraging them. To repent, believe in Jesus who died and rose, inviting them to church. The Samaria might be someone, might be someone who's homeless, jobless, drunken, uh, bound by drugs, uh, prostitute, uh, pimp. You, you reach out and give the gospel to them. Or the possible, or the most part of you, for you, might be your city. And when you go across town to go to the store, there's the gospel we can all give. But also look at this: what Jesus says, Matthew nine thirty-five. And Jesus went about all the cities and villages, teaching in their synagogues and preaching the gospel of this kingdom, of the kingdom, and healing every sickness and every disease among the people. 36. But when he saw the multitudes, he was moved with compassion. That's a key. Say, I must be moved, must be moved. with compassion. I encourage you. I, I, you know, the Lord, <coughs> compassion will move you. In the early days after I got saved, didn't have a church that was, were you ever encouraged to preach the gospel? No. Were you ever taught to preach the gospel? No. The Lord dealt with me. Why well, it was him. I remember those early days, I'd be praying for hours. We never taught. Them. I just did it because my heart moved me. I'd be pounding the ground, weeping, saying, Lord, if you cannot use me to reach these people, kill me now. I don't encourage people to pray that way, but I was serious, and he saw I was. And so he sends me around the world because he's found, he saw my heart. He says, I'd rather die than not fulfill his mission. Move with compassion to do something. But consequently, every day for two years, going, all people just, no one listened, no, I kept going, kept going. Was it discouraging? Sure. Did you give up? Never! Say, I will never give up! Say, I, I will never give up! Because Jesus did not give up on me. Move with compassion on them because they. Faded and were scattered abroad as sheep, having no, no shepherd. 37. Then saith he unto his disciples, The harvest truly is plenty, but the laborers are few. 38. Pray ye therefore the Lord of the harvest, that he will send forth laborers into his harvest. Amen. We're to preach everywhere. Not everyone will go and preach everywhere. Some will preach in a locale. That's fine. As Lord, the Lord, the one the Lord has called you and anointed you to reach. But he says we can all. Though not Christians might all preach to everyone worldwide, every Christian can pray for everyone to be saved worldwide. 
Amen. Amen. Say, I can pray, I can pray. For, the for the souls to be saved in every nation. You can go further in prayer than you can through the air or in preaching. I've been to 21 countries so far, but I've never gotten the whole country together at one time to preach the gospel to them. But in believing prayer, by the Holy Ghost, the name of Jesus, you can gather the whole country, the whole country, the whole world together, and have the Holy Ghost minister Christ to them as you believe. You understand? Years ago in a vision, the Lord showed me the world, the map of the world. I was praying with the first church I ever was, the young believers. I saw the map of the world. And I saw these glowing, from, from an epicenter, a focal point, glowing points of light going out into the various continents. Where I saw there were places of darkness that the light couldn't penetrate. The Spirit of God said to me, the glowing light you see are the places the gospel has reached. As the dark areas the gospel has not penetrated are the places that prayer has not yet penetrated. Prayer is the precursor for the gospel. Prayer is the way maker for the gospel. It prepares men's hearts to receive the Son of God. Do you understand? And fasting and prayer gives increased power. It's like a drill, a laser that cuts through the darkness of Satan, opens men's hearts to repent, believe, be saved, filled, and serve Jesus. Amen. So before we have preaching to every creature, we have to must have praying for every creature. Yes. Say for us to preach to every creature. We must effectively pray for every creature. Amen. Psalm 28, the Lord commands us, he says, Ask of me, the heathen, for thine inheritance, the uttermost parts of the earth. But he actually says, Ask of me, I'll give thee the heathen, thine inheritance, the uttermost part of the earth for thy possession. The word ask in the Hebrew means demand. God demands for us to demand him, Give us the unsaved. You see, oftentimes people pray that, but the prayers are listless and dead because there's no real heart engagement or desire for it to happen. Lord, save them. Lord, heal them. Lord, deliver them. Lord, do this. Lord, do it. But guess what? The word that's out of the abundance of the heart, the mouth will speak. When our heart is stirred, our mouth will speak up to heaven and the fire from heaven will come down. The Holy Ghost will touch their eyes. Why are you going to the 22nd nation? Because uh, as a young believer, our Lord appeared to me and told me, I put mass. Well, when my wife and I got married, we had a little small grove. I'd pray and weep over that grove every day. I'd lay hands on all the countries, weeping and crying out on God. Lord, save people. Lord, send me here. Lord, set me free from the devil's dominion in hell. When our hearts are inflamed for Jesus, it will be inflamed for people to see them see Jesus and know Jesus on that experience you've had and better. You move with compassion. Matthew 9, 36. And then because they faded and were scattered abroad as sheep, having no shepherd. Here's heaven. The same thing to the disciples. The harvest was placed, the labors are few. Pray therefore the Lord of the harvest that he will send forth labors into his harvest. The labors are few. There's seven and a half billion people on earth. There are not nearly that many labors. And many, listen, many that go out and preach are not affected because they're not filled with the Holy Ghost. With the evidence of speaking in other tongues. In the first church, Acts chapter 1, uh, verse 8, verse 14, 13 and 14, chapter 2, verse 1 through 4, they all were filled with the Holy Ghost and began to speak with other tongues of the Spirit of God. The Spirit of God gave them utterance. That was all 120. That was all there were of believe, followers of Christ in the world that time. They all spoke in tongues. Now they say 85% of believers do not. And most spirit-filled believers do not go out and preach the gospel worldwide or support missions. It's usually the unsaved ones we usually have the finances and send forth missionaries and they make disciples after their likeness who are not filled and not living holy and the only difference they have between them and the world is Christianity and name. 
There's no sick healed, no one miraculously transformed. As a matter of fact, no schizophrenia delivered from people delivered from that. No people delivered from smoking or drinking. People just learn to just cope. Oh, just try your best. No one delivered from drugs, alcohol, crack. No one blind eyes seeing deaf ears hearing. Ear was with Catherine. Her ear was deaf. Pastor, pray for this ear. Okay, let's trust the Lord. And Holy Ghost, I can hear, I can hear. That's what convinces believers. Unbelievers, I'm sorry, and believers too. Believers see the signs and one wonders. They say, oh my God, let me get filled with the Holy Ghost. Let me speak in that new tongues, those new languages. You know, Christ said they shall speak those new tongues. It's part of his commands. Amen. Said they shall. Amen. So if you're not yet filled, you can be filled today. God's power, God's power can come in your life and work through your life to everyone around you. Christianity is a power relationship with God through Jesus. And he wants to use you by God to change your environment with the power of the Holy Ghost. Do you understand? Amen. We pray. He said, the man in act in Psalm 2 8, and I will give the heathen. Saints demand for them to be saved here in Lansing and Myanmar. Demand it. Forget about your situation. Remember Jesus and his. That's all that matters. In fact, as you will sow salvation to others and pray for others, guess what? It will come back to you. But if you're preoccupied with self, you'll find very little happening because you're not sowing anything to get anything back. Are you understanding tonight? That's a good word because most professional believers, I hate to say it, are selfish. He said, deny self. They have a cross and follow, follow me. So believers are selfish. They live for themselves. The big three. Follow the Son of the Holy Ghost? No. Me, myself, and I. Ego, super ego, and the id. It's like for Satan and Freud, the unbeliever. Not trying to be mean, but being honest. We can't be saved and be selfish. We become saved and we become selfless. Christ crucified, we become crucified with him to everything we think we need and we think we want. Christ calls us to get off the throne and let him be on the throne. That's a good word. Amen. Say, Christ, Christ, you're calling me you're calling to me. get off the throne of my, my life and let you be on the throne. My feelings will no longer be on the throne. My mind will not, no longer be on the throne. My choices will no longer be on the throne. Be the king of my life, Jesus. Be the king of my life, Jesus. Live and preach your gospel through me. Live and preach your gospel through me. In Jesus' name. Pray. In Isaiah 45, 11, he says, Command concerning the work of my sons, concerning the work of my hands, command ye me. He tells us, number one, to pray by demanding the unsaved. To pray by commanding the unsaved to be saved. And he'll do it. Proverbs 21 1, the king's heart is in the hand of the Lord of the river of water. He'll turn it whatsoever he will, he will. He'll turn the hearts. If you'll pray and demand, command, believe him to do it, he will do it. Amen. Just recently, let me tell you, testimony brings in my mind. We had North Africa for Jesus, 2017. The only missionary journey that did not. It was planned that it not go through at that time. In the Lord's time, it will. But the country, I never, I never revealed the country besides only a couple knew it. Because it's a Sharia law, Muslim country. Many who had been there, the time was ready to go. One man was in prison and tortured for a year. That's why that's the only place I was going alone. It's with the Holy Ghost. This country has been a bastion of Islam since the 8th century. There are very few Christians there in the whole country. The only missionaries there have been so-called the Catholic religion, which does not preach born-again salvation through Jesus Christ. Mormons, Jehovah's Witness, those who do not preach the scriptures. Christ is God, man of his flesh. Live life, died, rose, is in heaven, the Son of God, one must repent, believe in, and obey for the Bible to have eternal life. In heaven, not damnation in hell. The website that we had, which uh, uh, the Lord moved someone to, 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 to build for us, made back in like 2005, 
has daily Bible readings on it. And some of you might visit it. We have a year's worth. We made that way back in like 2006. We made a new one since then. And there's a church planter. He's from Ethiopia. And the Lord told him to plant a church in this Sharia law Muslim country. It's illegal to be a Christian. We're going to kill you. He went there. And he was seeking the Lord for help, fasting and praying. The Lord led him to the website. And he rose up in boldness, filled the Holy Ghost. And he planted a church there. And he planted a church by using our daily Bible readings and teaching people that. Church started. I was scheduled to go. The enemy blocked it. When I was scheduled to go, they shut down every church in the whole country. So we, the Lord called us to go elsewhere when the word of God went forward. But, you know, from the moment he contacted me in 2014, I started praying. I prayed against the Muslim dictator that had a demonic grip upon that country for 30 years. People were greatly impressed. It's one of the most impoverished, war-torn, oh, God, genocide-experiencing countries in the history of the world. I fast. I pray, say, Lord, get him out. Save him or get him out. What if you do? Get him out and pray day in and day out. Fasting, pray for this man to get out. He has scores of human rights violations levied against him by the UN, uh, by the United Nations, and many other, Amnesty International, many other groups for just tor torturing, the cities, uh, torturing the citizens. He, in fact, they bomb their own citizens, the ones that are Christians. They bomb them. They send government-sanctioned airplanes with bombs to destroy the Christians, to kill them. The government owns up to it. The whole world is just crying, crying against it, trying to get them out, nothing can be done. So I said to fasting and praying, fasting and praying, seeking the Lord. As I checked my email the other day, I see in that country, dictator there for 30, celebration all through the streets. The dictator there for 30 years, he was cast out. <laughs> By prayer, God will use you even if you're one to change the world and the composition of the political uh, situation. Out now. And now there is a wave of democracy coming in that will help the gospel to have more free course in the citizens who so badly need Jesus. Do you understand? So pray. As the Lord says in 1 Timothy 2, 1 through 4, supplicate, pray, intercede, give thanks for all to be saved. So you might not go to all the world and preach, but you can go all the to all the world through prayer. Lastly, go with me, if you would, please. The book of Deuteronomy 8.8. 8. Christ's vision for his global church, local church, corporately. Number one, we're to preach. Say, we're to preach to every creature. Worldwide. Two, we're to pray for every creature worldwide. Amen. Number three, as we bring this to a close. Serious message. Christ's vision for his lo local and global church was kept in the center of the hearts and minds and every program and activity the early church undertook. It was all about upward to Jesus, outward to people, so they could know Jesus. The church in this day and age sadly is lost sight of that. We need to do social works of benevolence. We need to feed those we need food. That's why we have the food pantry in the back after service. Clothe the naked. We have clothes to help people. We help people get housing, get jobs. But the first priority of the church is to give them Christ, Amen. not the social, not the Christ. physical, yeah, which will right. pass away, but Jesus who will never pass away. Yes. And once we have, all of us have this vision, we'll take Lansing and this world for Jesus. Yeah. That's why you're here. That's why this church exists, to win the world for Christ. I mean, we, the Lord uses to be an example of all the body of Christ. Everyone will do the same. There are others who are on fire doing that vision. Many, though, are spiritually dead. Though there might be tens of thousands of members. Many are doing nothing besides having a social party with each other. And the Lord has left in a long time. Deuteronomy chapter 8, verse 17. Without, verse 18. 
Ah, let's go 17. And thou shalt say in thine heart, My power and the might of mine hand have gotten me this well. 18. But thou shalt remember the Lord thy God, for it is he that giveth thee power to get wealth, that he may establish his covenant, which he swear unto thy fathers as it is this day. Number one, we preach every creature. Two, we pray for every creature, every person. Three, we give for the gospel to go out to all the people in all the nations. The Lord says the purpose of currency is conversion. The purpose of currency is conversion. You and I have been given currency that's to be converted into conversion of souls to Christ. That's the purpose of it. Now go with me, if you would, to Matthew 26. Matthew 26. What is the covenant our Father, through our Lord Jesus Christ, by the Holy Ghost, wants to establish in all the earth with all people? He said to Abraham... As you see the stars in the sky and the sand on the shores innumerable, so shall your descendants be in Genesis 15, 5 through 6. The Bible says in Galatians 3, we are Abraham's seeds and heirs of Christ. You see the Spirit. And let's see what this translates into. Who are Abraham's descendants? We see in Romans 4, Abraham is the father of faith. So it has to do with faith. Now go with me to Matthew 26 as we bring this to, to a close. We preach to every person worldwide. Say we preach to every person worldwide. We preach to every person worldwide. Say we pray for every person worldwide. We pray for every person worldwide. And say we give for the salvation, we give for the salvation of every person worldwide. Every person worldwide. Matthew 28 no, I'm sorry. I said Matthew 26. I'm sorry. Matthew 26, 28. What's the covenant? We were to give to see established worldwide. Verse 28. Verse 26. And as they were eating, Jesus took bread and blessed it and broke it and gave it to the disciples and said, Take, eat, this is my body. 27. And he took the cup and gave thanks and gave it to them, saying, Drink ye all of it. 28. For this is my blood of the what? Of the New Testament, which is shed for many for the what? Remission. For the remission of sins. Testament there in the Greek means covenant. The covenant that God wants to use our wealth to establish with every person on the earth is remission of sins through the name of Jesus. Amen. So Christ commands to go into all the world and preach repentance of remission of sins in his name, but also he wants us to give to those who are going but have the finances to reach the whole world with the message of Christ dying and rising to save them from sin and hell, give them Amen. eternal life in heaven. Do you understand? Yes. Amen. That's why uh, Psalm 30, 35, 27 says, Let the Lord be magnified, which hath pleasure in the prosperity of his people. Because he knows when you, his servant, it says, because he knows when you and I, his servants, have prosperity, right. we'll give it to save yes. souls. Amen. Bill Gates, George Soros, Warren Buffett, don't give one penny to save souls because they're not saved themselves. And they don't want souls saved. But we who are saved, we want others to be saved and we're to preach for it, pray for it, and give towards that end because it gladdens Christ's heart. You understand? Yes. This is the Christian life. This is the true gospel. This is why they did so much in Acts because they're in one accord just for the common goal of Christ, his vision, to see the world saved brought to the Father through him by the power of the Holy Ghost. You understand? So we see the purpose of currency is conversion. Now, 1 Corinthians 16. 1 Corinthians 16. I'm almost finished. <laughs> Me and my for Jesus. We're getting, going into, praise the Lord, unfamiliar territory. We're going with the Holy Ghost. And we're looking forward to becoming very familiar territory with all the souls that will be saved. Amen. Churches trained and the gospel flooding that whole land. Oh, glory to God. This is encouraging. These, uh, we get testimonies uh, regularly. That the gospel that's gone forth, it's still bearing fruit. Not so long ago, he might get, these people might get this, Pastor Joe Norte, the first missionary trip, oh boy, what was that, 2002, in Ghana. We went around to eight stations around the whole country. Rural stations, some in the capital city of Accra, some in Tikobo, some in various, uh, you know, 
I see various places. And uh, people were, when I was leaving the place, the people were running after the car testifying, heal the tuberculosis, heal the blood disease, heal the cancer, heal the AIDS, all these kind of things. AIDS run me back. That fruit is still remaining. It's been 16, what, 17 years now? Many of you, we preach with these crusades and pastors, and they become preachers. Some now are, they were business people or students, now they're, they're evangelists, pastors. Some are playing churches around the world. As you preach, pray, give, fruit will remain for Christ's glory. 1 Corinthians 16, verse 1. Now concerning the collection for the saints, as I have given order to the churches of Galatia, even so do ye. Two, upon the first day of the week, let every one of you lay by him in store as God hath prospered him, that there be no gathers when I come. Three, and when I come, whomsoever you shall approve by your letters, then will I send to bring your liberality unto Jerusalem. Four, and if it be meet that I go also, they shall go with me. So one, the purpose of currency is conversion. Two, the collection of currency for conversion is commanded. The collection for currency for conversion is commanded. He says, in verse 1, collection, collection of the saints, as I've given order, so do. Even so do ye. He's commanding me, commanding you. What he's given us, we need to give for the souls to be saved. Amen. Verse 2, he says, upon the first day of the week, let every one of you lay by him in store as God has prospered him, and there be no gathers when I come. For the Lord's given, it's to be given for souls to be saved. And he says, when we give, it's given unto us, pressed down, shaking together, running over, men given to our bosom, Luke 6, 38. So, one, we see in terms of giving, the purpose of currency is conversion. Two, collection of currency for conversion is commanded. Paul said, do it, didn't he? Amen. We know scripture is given by inspiration of God, the Holy Ghost is saying, do it. And lastly, 2 Corinthians 9, 2 Corinthians 9. Last, the last scripture, and then we'll recap, and then we'll, we will give an opportunity for people to come to Jesus, to come to repentance, faith in Christ, eternal life. Hallelujah. That's the covenant. Our sins might be cleansed. We might be born again, saved, have eternity with God and have to Jesus, and also be filled with the Holy Ghost to help others come into that blessed relationship of reconciliation, redemption, salvation. Amen. Why we're in the earth now to give this good news of Jesus. 2 Corinthians 9, verse 6. But this I say, he which soweth sparingly shall reap also sparingly. And he which soweth bountifully shall reap bountifully. Verse 7. Every man. Did that say some men? No. A couple men. No, every man. Every man. Now, the book, the epistle of 2 Corinthians is written to who? Is it written to the unbelievers? So it's saying everyone's supposed to be doing something. Every man, according as he purposes in his heart, so let him do what? Yeah. Yeah. So the amount, in the old covenant they gave 10%. We were talking about in the offering. But now we have a new covenant based on established on many other promises. So what do we have? It might be <laughs> weekly wage, hourly wage, salary, savings, now tax return time, whatever. Investments, whatever comes that we should give the Lord at least 10%. Because it's all his anyway, isn't it? But as he purposes his heart, let him give. He's saying, every man, every woman, every child is supposed to be given. Let him give, not grudgingly. Well, Lord, I know I to, Oh, boy, I don't know how the bills are going to get paid up. <laughs> no, Lord, thank you. It's yours. You allow me to have some of it. <laughs> and then he gives us, he also has most of it. We're going to try to heal him in Jesus' name. He says, not of this. Oh, Lord, I've got to do it all. Okay, there. I'm gonna, I'm gonna give towards souls to be saved. Okay, there it is. Oh boy, Lord, this, this is a mission trip. Oh. No, for God love the what? Cheerful, cheerful giver. Cheerful, because you know the Father so loved, He so cheerfully loved the world that He gave His only begotten Son. We sort of believe that him should not perish but have a blessed life. If the Father cheerfully gave, and we're made in his image and likeness, we need to cheerfully give as well. 